this idea of irreducible complexity in terms of cells in a moment. Um, we also, Bob, we need to define macro versus micro evolution because I think that's an important factor. And we have a phone call. So let's do the call first. Welcome to Christian Questions. This is Jonathan and Rick. Who are we speaking with? Good morning, gentlemen. This is Julius. Good morning, Julius. What a fascinating subject. Yeah, we've only scratched the scratch of the scratch of the surface here. <laughs> I appreciate Bob Gray's input. Very scientific, very uh, uh, credible. Um, I'd like to remind you, Rick, that last week you said I put in my two cents. Okay. Okay. My math says I put in four cents because I called twice. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> well, from my scrapbook on this subject... Julius scrapbook. I, I have just a, a couple of comments, and I'd like to share a poem with you, if I may. Okay. Number one, uh, the greatest, the greatest truth known to man, in my opinion, is the existence of the supreme intelligent creator. Number two, Mother Nature, Mother Nature. Which school did Mother Nature go to? I, I have difficulty with that attributing. Uh, random to Mother Nature, the beauties of uh, God's creation. And number three, uh, uh, the late Walter O'Malley, I think you folks must have heard of Walter O'Malley. He owned the, uh, once the Brooklyn Dodgers and then the Los Angeles Dodgers. Okay. Here's a quote from him. I think a fascinating quote. He says, luck, you know, to be lucky, luck is the residue of design. Even luck is design. And uh, finally, I'd like to share you uh, quickly uh, my favorite, one of my favorite poems, uh, my favorite poem on evolution, and it is titled, Darwin's Theory Exploded. Okay. Here it goes. Okay. Three monkeys sat in a coconut tree, discussing things as they're said to be, said one to the others, now listen, you two. There is a certain rumor that cannot be true that man descended from our noble race. The very idea is a rank disgrace. No monkey ever deserted his wife, starved her babies, and ruined her life. And you've never known a mother monk to leave her babies with others to bunk or pass them on from one to another till they scarcely know their very own mother. And then the final verse. And another thing you'd never see, a monk build a fence around the coconut tree. And let the coconuts go to waste, or getting others to take a taste. Why, if I put a fence around the tree, hunger would force you to steal from me. Here is another thing a monk won't do. Go out at night and get in a stew, or use a gun a club or a knife and take some other monkey's life. And the conclusion to the poem, yes, man descended the honorary cuss, a brother, he never descended from us. God bless. <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you, Julius. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, that's uh, Julius's perspective. There you have it. <laughs> Three monkeys sitting in a tree. But we appreciate uh, his comments on uh, the greatest truth. Actually, and I, and I agree with that. The greatest truth known to man is the existence of a, of a divine God, a, a creator. And then you look at nature and you say, you know, there there is that evidence. And to me, the two are are inseparable. But uh, uh, and and work is the uh, residue of design. Or luck, rather, is the residue of design. I think that's uh, that's that's well said. So thank you, Julius, for that input. So, Bob, let's get back to the. Um, explanations you were about to uh, uh, embark on in terms of this irreducible complexity, what it is and a, a natural example of such a thing. Well, Rick, there's a couple of things that uh, Michael Behe, for instance, refers to, and I think they're good examples. Uh, one is um, something that Darwin couldn't know. Uh, for example, in our, uh, in our bodies, we have the ability for uh, cilia to throw out, uh, like in a sneeze or a cough, our bodies, those things which are intruding. And the, the interesting thing about them is that there is in them a chemical reaction that's occurring that not only causes the, uh, 
the foreign particle, let's say, to be sneezed out or coughed out, rather. Uh, but but also the mechanism can reset itself biochemically. Okay, now you're talking about the cilia, yeah. which is this t- little tiny hair-like hair-like something or other in your lungs. Is it? I, I think down in the in the uh, bronchioles and so forth. Down in the bronchioles, the these things would be. Uh, Clearly, uh, something that Darwin could not have examined because of the biochemical reaction, which the scientists now understand. Okay, now just, the just is, one point there. Yes, go okay, because I think that's important. So Darwin built his theory based on things that he could observe and examine, and now we're saying because we can see things that he could not see, should we change what the basis was based on what we now know to be true? That's that's the idea of this irreducible complexity. Go ahead. The the idea also is is that can we Assume, or could any scientist really and honestly assume that this multiple uh, group of factors came into existence to cooperate with each other to create a um, such a thing? Uh, or, for example, like the flagellum, uh, which would which would have a propeller to, to propel it through um, uh, through uh, its its uh, its location in uh, in uh, some s- substance. The the idea that all the little parts that are required to function together, for them to come together to work, they would not be needed, the parts, unless all the parts were together. Ah, like the mousetrap. Yes, and to assume that some of them were there and the other ones were hanging around and were brought in if needed is to assume a little bit much because there are so many factors involved in the early life of the Earth that would have even extinguished them. Uh, some of these chemical processes supposedly existed in the environment of uh, cyanide or ammonia, and the question is, could they really have survived, even if they were in existence, as as a chemical process coming together? But then to put them together in some living organism and have them function as a unit, as the mousetrap, is to assume that all of this took place. And it's really a matter of faith, I think, that that someone would be able to say that all this together happened and it explains why cells exist when in fact the cell is even so much more complex than this mousetrap and this bacteria and the, the flagellum and so forth and the propeller like devices Me- mechanisms inside in fact the propeller on the back of the bacteria spins at 20,000 rpm no 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 think well, let, let's understand what you you're talking about bacteria which is something so small you can't even see yeah that's and, true and you're talking about something that because we now science can now look at these things they can see this little propeller-like thing spinning at 20,000 RPMs. It's estimated. Well, 